so here we are in what is the Hindenburg, but I do have a different livery on here. I do have the fictional USS Enterprise. At least I'm pretty sure it's fictional. I don't think they actually had these. I don't think Germany would have made the United States any of these that we have used in war against them. But we are at the airport Frederickstein or hang on, I can't ever pronounce it right. Frederick Steffen, I think is how you pronounce that. Well, we are in Europe, I mean Germany. Well, same thing. Uh, but uh, the reason I am starting off at this airport is because this thing here, this tower, launch tower as I'm going to call it, uh, it, I've only seen to be available while you're at this airport. There may be a couple other ones where it actually took off and landed from in real life that it's available at. Uh, but you can take off the Hindenburg at any airport, any location. Uh, it's just you won't have this necessarily, uh, which really is just there for visuals. It does actually nothing. Uh, so to get started, there's going to be a couple things you want to do first. And that is going to be set up some custom camera views. Uh, so your default one, which is right here up front, to be honest, you'll never spend any time here unless you just want to sightsee. Uh, the places I spend the most of the time at is just over here to the right, which is by your uh, main clipboard here. It's where you give your orders and control the aircrafts. Uh, well, just well, pretty much everything. Uh, but it also has your engines, uh, has your megaphone here, and I'm going to get into all this stuff, of course, here in a little bit. But set up you a custom camera view uh, for somewhere about this angle, just give or take a little. Don't have to be exact, just whatever you prefer. And then right over here to the left of this position is the uh, elevator controls and the ballast controls, your water ballast. So you're going to spend a lot of time over here as well. Uh, this is your elevator and this is the water ballast panel. Uh, I actually, you can make a custom camera over here if you want. I did, but I found that I really just stay over here and look over here and control this. I don't hardly ever actually switch to it that much. And really the only other camera view you're going to want to have uh, is this one right over here, somewhere around here. And this is your gas controls. This is for when you're wanting to land. Uh, this will control your descent. Uh, there's some other positions here in the back, which I'm not going to get into any of this because I even haven't really tried it yet, but it's got like your maps, uh, course plotting, uh, stuff like that, which you'll use in the career missions and whatnot. So those are the main ones you want to set up. There's really no key bindings you have to worry about per se. There is some you can set up, but I don't use any special key bindings. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, the first thing you want to do uh, to get this taken off is, uh, well, let me go over this clipboard real quick. So you have a type of flight, easy, normal, and realistic, self-explanatory. Uh, starting off, you might want to go in easy. Uh, I know nothing about the Hindenburg, and I started off in normal, and I've been just fine. Uh, and realistic is what it says, realistic. You have to do everything just about as hey, you actually was flying the Hindenburg, I guess. Of course, I never flew it. Uh, you do have a couple options here. Uh, your effects, your 3D passengers. Uh, when you move around in the cabin, do you want to walk or run? Uh, your engine. Now, this is a big one here. So, depending on what type of input you're using for your throttle. Uh, if you have all four levers for all four engines, you'll want to do manual. If you have a single throttle input or three uh, single axis, you want to do all. If you have two, a left and a right, you want to do front, rear, left, right. Just set that to how you need it. So this is your main menu page. Your status is basically just kind of like a 3D, or not a 3D, kind of like a very non-detailed blueprint basically of the ship. And these little arrows will take you to camera views. And you can go to these areas. Uh, there is some stuff you can actually interact in these areas, which I'll go to over in a little bit. It's pretty neat, though. 
and then you have your center center of gravity and load page here uh, so this is shows you all your levels of your fuel water your gases uh, stuff like that uh, your oil, your cooling water, while you're on the ground, if you want to change any of this or refill, uh, you do have to be moored, and you'll just simply click this, maintenance operations, please. and then add this. You shouldn't actually have to add much or do any of that in the beginning Start because the computer will actually automatically calculate everything for you and get you what you need. Uh, so we'll go here to the orders page, and this is basically just all your different chief uh, people, uh, your watch officer, your rudder man, elevator, head cook. You can change your what type of meals you serve, all that, how much food, drink storage, and water you have on board. That comes into handy when you're doing your long trips. You have to make sure you ration everything enough to make it. Uh, your steward to uh, like board and uh, deboard your passengers. Uh, and you can see the rest there. Engine, navigation, rigging, electrical, radio, and the uh, mechanical, I guess, is what that stands for. I have no idea. Uh, so, yeah. So, let's go back to the captain's page here. And now we will start the process for taking it off. So, upon loading into a airport... You may have to use the slew feature and move your uh, Hindenburg out to a more open area so you're not clipping into any buildings because the Hindenburg is four times the size of a 747, lengthwise at least. So it's probably not going to fit wherever you start at. Uh, but anything, or anyway, just go ahead and hit your all systems on. Getting started, please. Go to your steward page. Go up to your stairs, you'll click that, and if you're night, you'll want to click lights. Uh, and then you can expedite just to make everybody board faster, and then you'll simply click on the board. Now, you won't actually see anybody boarding, but you can see the stairs down there. Uh, and the reason there is a light button there, so if you're dark and you don't have the lights on, it's going to take longer. Uh, one thing I'm going to recommend you do on your first few flights with this, which I'm going to do f just simply for this video, is change your weather to clear. Uh, because right now I have 14 knots of wind speed, and that will make it very difficult to control. We'll do a few clouds. Uh, but that way you do have pretty much no winds. Uh, you don't have to worry about taking off in a headwind, landing in a headwind. Uh, you pretty much can land at any direction you need to. Because uh, it takes a lot of practice to get very good with landing it on the spot you exactly need to. So it holds 50 people and we're now done boarding. You'll hear the ring in there. Just sig uh, signaling that they have loaded. Uh, so you'll go ahead and raise the stairs. Now that that's done, you want to go back to the captain's uh, page tab here, and you want to hit takeoff. And what this does is it gets all your crew members in position and ready to do your takeoff procedures. Because uh, if you notice here on the main page, I am the captain, of course. And all of these say AI by side them, and that means the computer is going to control them. At least they're going to do what I tell them to do. Uh, you don't have to manually do everything yourself. Uh, you can take these off, uncheck them, and actually control each position uh, however you want. Uh, I've not really done many of them. I do really the elevator myself. Uh, but yes, you can control certain ones however you wish. Uh, so now that we have that, uh, we're going to do a report. Please give me a general report. And we're going to wait till we get the uh, go no go from all of them, kind of like a rocket launch. Just want to make sure we get all good green thumbs up.
Everything is in order. All right, very good. Everything is in order. All right, so now we're at the point we want to ask for takeoff. So simply just go to your radio page here and hit click or click ask for takeoff. And you'll want to pay attention for this dude right here. You want to make sure he goes from a red flag to a white flag. All right, now that we have a, a uh, white flag from him, that means we are ready to fly. I would say ready to roll, but we don't really roll in this. Uh, well, we hope we don't. <clears throat> uh, so now we're good there. We just simply hit cast off moorings. Moving. Copy. 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 And we will start to uh, lift. So uh, our back end's kind of up a little high, so what we'll do is we want to drop some water out of the front here. Warning, we are tilting dangerously downward. You may not always have to drop from the front. Uh, this could be just because I'm on uh, clear skies. I have absolutely no weather or wind or anything. Uh, so we're just going to keep dropping some water out of the front to balance it out here. We are tilting dangerously downward. It is slowly balancing us out. You don't want to go crazy with the buttons, just spamming it like crazy. You do want to take it easy. Because, of course, you do only have so much water. And if you wish, right here is my vertical speed indicator. Uh, that is what I watch a lot. Uh, if you have something else you can do to watch your vertical speed, that'd be great. Your uh, I think this is your altimeter for a naturally no, I don't know what that is. I'm not gonna lie. The manual does say where everything is at. I always just have this. Uh, you do have like your navigation, like a heading and stuff right there. I would say that's your vertical speed indicator possibly right there. All right, now that we're a couple hundred foot up, I'm gonna go ahead and tell them to pull the ropes up. Hold up the moving. Roger. 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 And the front cone. Hold up the front cone cable. Roger. And you can now put up the megaphone. Uh, we are now in the sky. Uh, and at this point in time, my controller kind of already did it but you can go ahead and move it from stop to idle to get the uh, engine started my hotas was just barely in that position apparently and it already did it uh, that's how you do there no, that's literally it uh, still kind of nosing down a little so I'm gonna release a little water from the front a little more
Alright, now that we're leveled up pretty good, uh, we're going to start increasing our uh, throttle. We are going to go ahead and pull the landing gear up. Uh, it simply just retracts them a little. I guess it's a little more aerodynamic that way. And I'm going to hit the front ballast one more time. And also, you can actually see it dropping water too. It's pretty neat. There we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, so yeah, just uh, like any other aircraft, you simply just move your, uh, increase your throttle. We're going to go half for now. That is sending all the information to the other uh, rooms, toward the engine rooms. So those, uh, the people working on the engines, running the engines, we'll go ahead and put them at half speed. And while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and pull back the rudder or elevator five degrees. So I'm just going to pull back until this is about the five degree mark. And this little button here is a lock. You'll definitely want to use that. I'm going to let go. And yep, there we go. Now we're at five degrees. Uh, yeah, you'll definitely want to use it. So you got to keep that constant input of elevator control because you'll keep it at five percent a lot of the time uh, so now we're going to go ahead and let's see we're facing 136 degrees I'm just going to rotate my compass here we're going to go east so what I'm going to do is set it about 90 degrees and I'm going to flip this switch here and then I'm going to go to my captain's page here and hit follow heading and what this is going to do is basically like autopilot in a way. This dude here will control the rudder input and he will just follow whatever heading I assign. So if we come back outside, we can see the rudder is to the uh, left. Uh, starting to nose down a little bit again, so I'm going to start releasing a little more water from the front. And everything's looking pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and go full. You want to make sure you're keeping a positive rate of climb while you're pretty low to the ground, obviously. And we'll just pull back on the rudder just a little bit, like 7.5% seven and a half degrees rather and now that we're pretty much cruising we're going to go ahead and go to the captain's page if you're not already still on it and just hit cruise all crew on cruise station all crew to cruise station And it obviously does take a long time to get your speed built up. Uh, we're getting ready. Yep, we're now at 40 knots. So it can cruise at like uh, 70, 65. Uh, so it does take a couple minutes to get there. And let's start working on our vertical control here some more. Get some positive rate of climb going back up. Typically, the Hindenburg cruised at around 600 feet or so above ground level. Cruising over Germany in our Hindenburg in the 21st century. So I'll take a moment now and go over some of the other views and things it has to offer. Uh, so if we go to the status page, 
Uh, we do have passenger aboard, so they will show up, but you can go to the dining room. And you can see our passengers in here enjoying their flight. Uh, it says in the manual that it serves three meals a day. I don't know what time a day that is, so I've not actually seen if it actually simulates uh, them eating and showing food and whatnot. Uh, that would be pretty cool. So our next area we'll go to is, uh, we'll go to the lounge. Uh, and the reason I'm going here is because it does have something really neat. Uh, and that is, if you click on one of these, you can hear the piano play. And you can move around these areas freely. You can hear it warning me there we're tilting dangerously upwards. You'll get that a lot. And as you can see, my frame rate's kind of low. And this is a very CPU hungry aircraft. And I have a really, really good CPU and GPU too. Uh, I ain't, ain't going to say I got top of the line, but I've, I've got the 13th Gen i9 and the 3080 Ti. So, we are tilting dangerously upwards. Uh, of course, it depends on what area you're in, too. And even though I'm out in the middle of nowhere right now without any traffic on, I actually was getting a little better frame rate yesterday in New York City with multiplayer on. So I don't know if certain things have a factor as to how it uh, controls or the performance of it whatnot but i'm gonna go through all these because i'll leave some for you to explore but you can also go to like the engine compartment here and look at the v16 engine it has with our aviator there and yeah all this stuff is clickable you can actually control these engines yourself and do everything yourself uh i've not tried it yet but it's uh pretty crazy how detailed it is uh, I do recommend for your first few times flying it to turn on your information tool tips about what you're hovering over until you learn them uh, since a lot of it's in German at least this stuff uh, and whatnot so it's good to kind of know what you're clicking unless you speak German then that's great or can read it at least uh, yeah, you can go through all these and see the different things it has. Like I said, I'll leave the rest for you to explore yourself. And if you find some you really just like, uh, you can save them to custom camera views. Uh, for instance, this is one of my more favorite ones here, off to the uh, lounge area by the window, so you can uh, see out the window there. There's another cool one I did not save, and I meant to, and I think it's the bar. Yes, it is the bar. Oh, and by the way, these doors are clickable, and you can open them. Uh, but you can come out here, and you can look down. It's really cool. I'm going to save that view here now while I'm uh, thinking about it. Yeah, pretty much all the doors are clickable. You can explore pretty much the whole ship on foot, uh, which is really cool. Uh, that's pretty much how you take it off and cruise it. Uh, our next one will be on landing. And I'm going to skip a lot of this flight because it's very slow and to be kind of boring unless you really just like the peacefulness, but you can do that on your own. So in a few seconds, I will show you how to land it. All right, so here we are coming up on our airport we're wanting to land at. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and kill the engines to idle. It does take a while to stop, like I was saying earlier. Um, one thing you also want to make sure you do is turn off your follow heading. I'm actually going to go ahead and hit full reverse now just to help slow it down. 
Our airport is right over here. Warning. We are tilting dangerously upwards. So I'm going to give it time to slow down. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and click land. So everybody will start to get ready for landing. Warning. We are tilting dangerously upwards. Ready to land. Ready to land. Warning. We are tilting dangerously upwards. Just working on keeping the aircraft stable. You'll get that dangerously upwards a lot. It's uh it's a beast to sometimes keep it perfectly level. Warning. We are tilting dangerously and as always you get better with anything over time. So yeah, we're at 52 knots, still slowing down. 50 knots. I'm not really worried about controlling my height so much at the moment. As you get better with this, like I was just saying, you'll be able to start multitasking and controlling your descent and everything all at the same time. But for simplicity -ness right now, I'm just going to do it more basic. And also because I'm still learning as well. We are tilting dangerously upwards. We're at 40 knots now. Warning. We are tilting dangerously upwards. I'm just going to go for the field here beside the airport. Warning. I am hand controlling the rudder now. Warning. We are tilting dangerously upwards. We're at 30 knots. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to idle. For now. Warning. We are tilting dangerously all right, so now that we're almost over our landing spot or coming up on it, I'm just going to go and hit full reverse again, just get us down to about <clears throat> eight knots or so, and then I'm going to kill it again. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now, though, is go ahead and hit uh, the back gases a couple times. I'm just going to hit the back, too. And you're supposed to, it says start in the back in the manual, and I'm also starting in the back this time, especially because I'm still kind of nosing up a little. Warning, we are tilting dangerously upwards. I'm going to hit the front a couple times. Warning, we are tilting dangerously upwards. And you will see your amounts there in the little graphics. Warning, we are tilting dangerously upwards. All right, so I'm going to kill the engines. And what I'm going to do is ask for landing. Warning, we are tilting dangerously upwards. And really that only matters if you're at one of them areas that has one of them little landing things. And this one doesn't, obviously. Alright, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is... Now there's a couple ways to do this, actually. And I'm going to go over that now. Controlling my descent here, going down a little fast. So, uh, so on the menu page you can hit drop the ropes. Roger. I'm kind of going backwards now, so I'm going to hit slow just a little bit in the front. We'll drop the front or the center ropes. We'll drop the front ropes. And there you can see that. Warning, we are tilting dangerously upwards. And we're only about a hundred foot up, so I'm gonna go ahead and 
get ready to kill the engines and then have the men on the ground go ahead and grab it that way we don't move grab the rear ropes roger you can see your little an animation here you can see they've got it in the back now roger warning we are tilting dangerously upwards i got the center ones roger Warning, we are tilting. Dangerously. They've got the front ones now, so release the front cone. Roger, got that. We're done with that, Warning. so now we're just going to continue to do our control descent. Go ahead and hit your landing gear out. You can see our guys down here have it. They're actually down there, I just ain't zoomed in far enough. They ain't perfectly always on the ground, but considering this is a unique innovation into Microsoft Flight, I'll cut them a break. Uh, we're going down pretty good right now, so I ain't really going to hit no more gas. Nice, smooth descent. I'll probably have to release some gas from the front or get the nose down. And there's the back. And yes, so the front is hanging out. Uh, so what I'm going to do is hit the gas on the front two a couple times. Just kind of watching my gauge here. And we're going down. And once you're on the ground, you can go ahead and go to your steward stair or stewardess page, hit the stairs, D board. Proceed with onboarding, please. Roger. Starting onboarding. And it will go from 50 to zero. It does not count down. At least it didn't the last couple times I've did it. Yep, there it is, and then you just undo the stairs, or retract the stairs, and then you pretty much just uh, do everything in reverse order. The last couple of things, turn your engines off. And then all systems off. And you are landed at this point. Not the best landing in the world. Uh, not sure why, but uh, it's okay. I landed. I got everybody safe. We did not crash. Uh, but yeah, it's a pretty cool aircraft. And it's got a few hiccups and some couple bugs. Nothing major. Uh, I, I imagine over time it's going to evolve to be something really unique. I mean, it already is, but... It'll be something even more unique than uh, what it already is now. Uh, but that'll conclude this video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Learned something from it. Of course, please like, subscribe if you uh, do wish to. Uh, see more videos uh, about unique aircraft in the future or just simply cool stuff. Uh, I do have an air show I'm going up to in... About a month and a half. Pretty excited for that. I'll have full coverage on that on my new camera. So my last ones were uh, like a 1080p video. This one will be uh, between 4 and 8K. Uh, I'll be switching between 4 and 8K videos. So it'll be pretty cool. Pretty excited to get, uh, get the videos uh, for this upcoming air show. I'll be seeing the Blue Angels, the F-22 demo team the AV-8B Harrier, and much more. Uh, but as always, safe flying and thank you.